اللهم ارحمني برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد respected brothers when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received revelation the first people to accept Islam were as soon as he informed his uh, noble wife Hazrat Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha she accepted immediately then Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was under the guardianship and being looked after by Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abu Talib had numerous children all the money that he would get he would spend on the poor he himself was regarded as a poor person so Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he offered to look after Ali ibn Talib and bring him up so Ali Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala who was 10 years old when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given revelation was made a Nabi and we've already mentioned or we've heard that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a freed slave Hazrat Zaid bin Haritha radiallahu ta'ala anhu and as soon as he heard he also saw Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praying salah Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu his Islam was he was 10 years old he was being brought up by Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha <coughs> Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha regarded him as their own son because Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's own children own sons especially they had passed away so now, as a boy, there was only one male, and Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu. <coughs> After Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got revelation, Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, he came, he taught him, he showed him how to do wuzu, and he taught him how to pray salah. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Hazrat Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha, they were praying salah when Ali walked in, and Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu asked, what's this? So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained, this is the religion of our forefathers, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. This is the true religion. And Allah has made me a messenger. And you should accept this. So now Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I cannot take any steps without asking permission or without informing my father Abu Talib. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, if you don't want to accept, fine, but don't tell anybody else. So then, uh, Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu said, okay, I won't talk to my father. But uh, then overnight, he went to sleep, he thought about it. In the morning, he said, this is not something which I need my father's permission for, and I accept. So 10-year-old, subhanAllah, Allah ta'ala gave him such a great understanding, and he accepted Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a prophet and a messenger. Then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, numerous people, they entered the fall of Islam. For example, there was a, a Sahabi, later on became a Sahabi, called Afif al-Kindi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he had good friendship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle, uh, Hazrat <coughs> Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he used to trade, whether he was from Yemen or he used to go to Yemen and he used to sell fragrances and perfumes. He says, I was with, I was at the home of Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, Hazrat Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa uncle, when a person came into his house and he started a prayer, he started salah. Then a lady came and she joined him. And then a boy about 11, 12 years old, he came in and he also joined them. And then the posture going into ruku and sajda, it surprised me. So I asked Abbas that what are they doing, who are they and what are they doing? So he said that uh, my nephew, he claims that the, an angel came to him and Allah has made him a prophet and a messenger and that's his wife. And uh, my other nephew, the son of my brother Abu Talib, meaning uh, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Afif Kindi says, years later, when I came back and then I accepted Islam. But by then, hundreds had already accepted Islam. And I used to beat up, I used to beat up myself. 
that if only you had accepted Islam when you first saw the Prophet, his wife Khadija radiallahu anha, and their son Ali ibn Abi Talib, if you had accepted then you would have been the fourth person to accept Islam. So anyway, this is how the very close people to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they accepted Islam. Then uh, the first person that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked to outside the family, outside people under his influence. Obviously the wife is going to accept the word, the word of her husband. The freed slave is going to accept the word of her, of her master, of his master. The child is going to uh, accept the word of his guardian. So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was the first independent free person who wasn't obligated in any way to the Nabi, to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam other than being a friend and having a close friendship with Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he told him and throughout, especially in Medina, when some, there was some sort of a dispute between Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu and anybody else. Sometimes they were human and then sometimes they used to say some things. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu, Hazrat others, they might get into a dispute. And every time Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether right or wrong, he always took the side of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu and he used to tell them, you, when I approached you with Islam, all of you, you had questions. You had doubts which needed alleviating. And I had to explain to you until I had to talk to you until you were convinced. Only then did you come into Islam. Hazrat Abu Bakr, he never, not for a second, he never doubted me. And as soon as I told him that the angel came to me and he said that I am a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes, I believe you and I accept and I want to accept your religion. And he took the shahada on my hands. So Hazrat Abu Siddiq radiallahu anhu was a very, very powerful helper and companion of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because what did Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu did? Because Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was one of the leaders, one of the richest people, one of the most generous. And even before Islam, in the same way that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was universally praised by the people of Makkah for being a, a very truthful person, for being a very trustworthy person. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, though not to that extent, but he was also praised. People used to go visit his house. The nobility, or the, nobili the nobility of Makkah, they used to come, they used to eat at his house, but not only the top people, even the poor people, they used to come and he used to help people regularly. And he was known as one of the leaders, one of the brilliant, one of the best people in terms of character from the people of Makkah. So because of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and who's accepting Islam, he went to his friends then, people of his, of his, uh, his very close friends, trades people, business people, rich people. And he managed to convince some of the top supporters of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to accept Islam. The likes of Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Abdurrahman bin Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and then later on Hazrat Ubeda bin Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he brought all them to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then after questioning the, Nabi, after questioning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they accepted Islam. So now this, after that, what happened was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he stopped wahi for some time. It's known as the fatrat. Then this was a test, one of the, an impossible test for anybody else. But this was a test of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam close that nobody had been drone or no, uh, nobody had got as close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then this is the matter of love and in love people are tested people have given up kingdoms because of love and this was love to the almighty love with the almighty love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala filled the heart of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with such love that the Prophet Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to yearn for a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah wanted to test him, so for some time, how long? Some people say a few months, some people say it was a few years, some people say three years, for three years after the initial few verses that were revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely blanked Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we can't even imagine the anguish and the pain of separation that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced. That's why we have in our books, in Bukhari, Kitab al-Tafsir, Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi says, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would get so despondent and he would be in such pain from the separation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this, this great blessing for the, the reason why the whole world was created, the message of or the direct message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words of Allah, the book of Allah, the Quran, the revelation of the Quran is stopped for months on end. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to become so aggrieved and used to basically in such a state that he used to threaten Allah that if you and then he used to go he used to go on a mountain and addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if this, this is what you've given me and he used to threaten that I will jump off and then Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam would come and he would soothe Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and say him ya Rasulullah be patient you are the true prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah does whatever Allah does, He does it for His own, through His own wisdom. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would understand, but then days go by, weeks would go by, and no, nothing, not as a Jibreel salatu wasalam coming, no message coming. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be once again, He would, uh, it would be in some, so, such grief and such pain that he would once again go on to the mountain. This happened uh, a few times, but it was, now some people say it was only a few days. Nobody loses their mind by a few days separation. And the majority of the scholars say it was months and months, if not years. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, the, the wahi, the, the revelation started coming and then it was, then Allah subhanahu, the Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was ordered to um, announce his messengership, announce his prophethood in public. One did Ashirat Kalaqarabin, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he invited all his uncles and relatives and cousins and nephews and all of them, he invited them and he to a feast and then he told them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, made me a messenger. This is when his uncle Abu Lahab, he stood up and said, for this you've gathered us, May you be destroyed. Tabbat yadak. May you be destroyed. It was an Arabic word. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse, Tabbat yadabi lahabim watab, that he is cursing the Prophet. He himself has no idea that he himself is cursed and he himself has destroyed himself. And this was a prophecy. Abu Lahab wanted to, if Abu Lahab wanted to prove the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrong, all he had to do was say, I accept Islam then this verse of the Qur'an would have been falsified. Anyway, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people started entering in drips and drabs. For example, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not, form, uh, did, did not inform even his own uncle, Hazrat Abu Talib. What happened was they used to go into nooks and crannies and into behind, behind a small hillock or behind wherever they'd find space they would go there and they would say their salah in, in, in privacy. So once Abu Talib was going with his son Ja'far and he came upon Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu praying their salah. So Abu Talib must have heard something or the other but because Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadn't directly addressed him, he asked him, uh, my nephew, what is this? So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained that I have been sent this is the religion of Allah. This is the religion given to Hazrat, uh, our forefather, Hazrat Ibrahim, and all the things about Islam. 
So Abu Talib said that I cannot leave the, for the religion of my forefathers. Then he turned to Ali. Ali, what are you doing? He was a child, 12, 13 years old. What are you doing? So he said, I have, I have adopted the faith and the religion of my cousin, my cousin brother, Muhammad. So then Abu Talib, he told his son Ja'far, who was older than Hazrat, Hazrat Abu Talib radiallahu anhu. So he was older than Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu. Ja'far bin Abi Talib. So Abu Talib ordered Ja'far that Ja'far, you stick with Ali and together you support and protect the, the, the protect my nephew Muhammad. So Hazrat Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala, he was already interested and he was he wanted to accept Islam anyway, so he accepted Islam. And he was about the 20th or 21st person to accept Islam. So in this way, numerous people they entered, but in over four or five years. They only managed to about only about 40 people. Hazrat Umar, when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, we are talking about Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu accepted Islam, about 40 men and 11 women had accepted Islam. There are different things, but it was around. So in six years of work, only 40 people and six, 40 men and six women had accepted Islam. And they accepted Islam through different means. For example, one of the greatest Sahabi, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He accepted Islam, he says, I was a shepherd and I used to take the goats of the people of Mecca out into the mountains and into the desert to obviously just as a, so that they could graze, they could, they could eat grass. So he says, I had numerous goats in my care when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, they passed by. And then they were coming from, a, from far off, so they were really hungry and thirsty. So Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked me, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says, he asked me if I, if I could give him some milk. So I said, now subhanallah, they weren't Muslims, but they were so trustworthy. He said, it did, I am just an Amin. I have been, these goats have been entrusted to me and I don't own them. I have no right to give you milk. So Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, is there any goat which no longer gives milk? The others have dried out. So he said, yeah, we've got numerous goats like that. So Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, bring one. So then he went and he brought an old, uh, which, which, an old goat which was no longer giving milk. So then Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took it, prayed something and he started milking it and subhanallah, the others filled and the Abu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he milked it and took out the milk. Then he, he gave to Hazrat Abu Bakr to drink, he drank. And then Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed something and the, the goat he went back to what it was. So seeing this miracle, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala he asked that, who are you? What do you call towards? He might have heard about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then what do you call towards? So then Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala who said, I accept you, I accept Islam, but Ya Rasulullah, can you pray for me? Can you make dua? Allah grants me knowledge. Allahu Akbar. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Barakallah. Allah give you barakat. Allah bless you. And you are a, a person of knowledge. Wa anta rajulun mu'allam. O kama qal Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you are such a person, such an individual, that Allah has granted you knowledge. And that's why when we look at the Sahaba, one of the greatest scholars from amongst the Sahaba, the greatest faqih from the Sahaba was Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And his knowledge was so vast that Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in his zaman e khilafat, Islam was still spreading and cities were being needed looking after. Cities, they needed scholars. They need people to teach the Quran and their hadith and the sayings of Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the people of Kufa, Kufa was a nothing place. Once the Sahaba went, they turned it into an uh, army barracks and it became an army city. Where people, thousands of Sahaba, they descended onto Kufa and from there they would go for the, uh, further to Azerbaijan, Afghanistan and those places. And then Kufa became a massive city with numerous masajid. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
he told Azul Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala, the people of Kufa, they asked that, can you send us a scholar that can teach us? So Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu told, said that, I have need of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud more than you, but I am giving preference to you over myself. That's how knowledgeable the dua of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa was. And similarly, numerous people. But then, once the, especially the poor people, the slaves, once they started enter, entering Islam, then their masters, they became crazy. They started beating them, torturing them. And inhumane practices. And we've heard how they treated Hazrat Bilal radiallahu anhu, how they treated, how, how they treated numerous Hazrat Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, Hazrat Ahmad bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the, uh, the, his, his parents, Hazrat Sumayya and Hazrat Yasir, and how Hazrat Sumayya radiallahu anha was the first person to be martyred and killed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, during all this, you had two sides. You had, so you, there were three types of people. The leaders of Mecca who did everything they could to completely destroy the message of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You had those who, even though they didn't accept, they, they either helped or they remained neutral. The likes of Hazrat Abbas and Abu Talib and that they helped the Prophet Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his mission. And then you had the believers. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, by nature, when he supported something, he was all in. When he opposed Islam, he was all in. He was the greatest enemy of Islam. He used to beat, he had a slave, slave woman and she had accepted Islam. And he used to beat her up until his arms would ache. And he helped others try to convince because Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and whose uncle, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and whose mother was Hantama binti Hashim. And Abu Jahl, he was Amr ibn Hisham. Hashim and Hisham were brothers. So Abu Jahl was the uncle of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and and taking whatever from him or from the family, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was extremely harsh and violent and cruel to the Muslims. But at the end of the day, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he also had good qualities. All of these Arabs, their qualities of bravery and generosity, and they would give up everything just to help her uh, a mehman, a guest. So Hazrat Umar had all these qualities. But at the same time, he was a firm believer in his idols, in his religion. And where he saw that this new religion has come to wipe out the people that I believe in, the gods that I've taken, and all my life, the people who I've turned to, all these idols, this new religion is, has basically come to destroy our ways. And the Arabs, they prided on their ways. That's why the, even Abu, Abu Talib, despite seeing everything, he'd see, he, he used to, even when Nabi Karim wasallam was a child, he used to rely on the Nabi, uh, Islam, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the removal of calamities. Once there was a famine and people were in dire straits, they were dying. So Abu Talib, he took Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the Kaaba. And then he held the gilaf of the Kaaba and then through the wasila of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through the bright and beautiful and nurani chehra, the enlightened face of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Talib begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for rain. And he says that when he took, when he taken hold of the ghilaf of the Kaaba, there wasn't a cloud to be seen. And as soon as he started dua with the wasila of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were dark clouds and he started pouring down. 
So Abu Talib knew that my nephew is not somebody his father had told him. The Prophet had mother had told him. He knew how precious and how full of barakah Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's presence was. But despite all that, the connection to the religion of their forefathers, it would stop them. That's why the people like Umar and Abu Jahal and Umayyah and all those, their connection, they were, they were so passionate about their religion that they were willing to do anything and everything to try to distinguish and completely destroy Islam. And that's what Umar, he was brought up. His father was even harsher than him. Khattab. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu after he became a Khalifa and then when he came back for Hajj, he used to, he went over a certain land. And then he stood there and he started saying, Oh, there was a time when I used to take the camels of my father and others, of my aunts from the Bani Makhzum. I used to take them and I used to bring them into the desert. And my father, he would beat me if I, if I didn't do my job properly. And he was very, very harsh and cruel towards me. And he used to say, Umar, you are, you are, you are, you are nothing and you'll never be anything. Subhanallah. You know, his father was such a, you know, harsh and that affected him. And that created a harshness in Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. But at the same time, from birth, he, with the whole of Meccan society, they were all wrestlers, they were all horsemen, they were archers. And their whole life from, from, from infancy, even before they could walk, they knew how to ride horses. They used to wield weapons. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made them into incredible fighters. We hear history about the great, the great, great generals and the brave generals. And, and then they have made up history of Troy and Achilles and Allahu Akbar. We don't need to go anywhere. Each and every Sahabi, he was a match. He would have de defeated and destroyed any of the brave so-called men and great generals. Because they had been brought up in the harsh climate of Arabia. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was born 13 years after Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then, like I said, his, the eighth forefather of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the ninth forefather of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they are one and the same, Hazrat uh, um, Ka'ab ibn al -Way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forefather was Ka'ab ibn al -Way. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala's forefather was Ka'b ibn Luwai. And that's where the, the, the separation came. And then Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu was salam and Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. They are all the forefathers of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. He was a Qurayshi and the son of Ka'b, Adi ibn Ka'b. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala's clan was known as Adawi. People descended from Adi ibn Ka'b ibn Ghalib, Ka'b ibn Luwai ibn Ghalib. So then his father, uh, Khattab ibn Nufayl. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his uh, lineage is Umar ibn Khattab ibn Nufayl ibn Abdul Uzza. This Nufayl ibn Abdul Uzza, the grandfather of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was also regarded as one of the top ranking people of Makkah Mukarramah. When he, there, were no, there was no authority, there was no there were no judges. There wasn't anybody there to help the poor people. So whenever there was a dispute, whenever judgments needed, needed to be given, then Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and his grandfather, Nufail ibn Abdul Uzza, he, every people would refer to him. Then whenever the Quraysh or the people of Mecca, they needed ambassadors to other tribes, to other people, then this Nufail bin Abdul Uzza, the grandfather, of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was given this task. Then that task fell onto Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu. When Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu became a man, people, and it is said from the whole of Meccan society, there were a handful of people. 
maximum 17 people who could read and write. But Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was one of those who could read and write. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to, and all of them, they used to, they had no schooling. But what would happen is almost on a monthly basis, regularly, there would be fairs, conferences. People would come from all over. And then their entertainment was the, was the poets. And the poets would, all the battles that took place and all the great people that went and, and throughout the days of the fair and the, you know, whatever, the gatherings. They used to come to Mecca and then Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was really interested in the history of the Arabs. Especially the battles and the, and the wars that used to take, take place. Now we don't really hear, but the Arabs were very, very powerful. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's forefathers, some of them were known to help either one power or the other. It wasn't by chance that, oh, uh, Arabia wasn't ruled by anybody. People tried. The Romans tried, they were defeated. The Persians tried, they were defeated. Allah had created it. We know about Abraha coming and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely destroying his army of elephants. So all of these people were incredibly brave. Nobody could touch them. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was similarly one of the strongest. And he was known. It wasn't just reputation. He used to do wrestling. He used to defeat everybody. And people could see how powerful and strong he was. It wasn't any that the, the Muslims, especially the, the new converts, they were very, very scared of him. That is why, inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll mention it next, uh, next week now. But when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu left his sister's house and he came towards the house of Arqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa was, the Sahaba were there, that's where they used to gather. And inshallah, I'll mention some of that, why they used to gather there in the next session. So then somebody saw Umar coming and all the, all the Sahaba, they became petrified, except a few. Oh, Umar's coming, Umar's coming. And they knew that he's coming now because uh, some reports, they say that Umar who was lost now after hitting his sister and his brother-in-law and then he, said he came, he still had the sword in his hand. And they saw that he's coming with the sword in his hand. It was Hazrat Hamza who wasn't scared of anybody. Hazrat Hamza said, what are you scared about? If he's coming with a good intention, then fine. If he's coming with a bad intention, then we'll kill him with his own sword. Hazrat <laughs> Hamza was Hazrat Hamza. And these brave men, they're not scared of anybody. But Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had the likes of Hazrat Umar Siddiq radiallahu anhu helping him. But the matters came to such a point that throughout the Quran, Allah Ta'ala says, when Hazrat Lut alayhi salatu was salam, his people came and they wanted to, when the angels came, this story, Hazrat Lut alayhi salatu was salam, he's got angels there. He's, he's hoping, ke, oh, if only I had a strong backing, I had a strong family so that my people would not deal or treat my, my guests in such a manner. He didn't know they were angels, obviously. Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to go to Fir'aun. So he said, make my brother a prophet and make him my, my wazir and my companion. Because just to face Fir'aun and his army and his might alone, everybody wants support. Everybody, all the Anbiya, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them support and help through one, a member or through the family. So now matters came to a head where after years and years of abuse and years and years of cruelty, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a Thursday night he did a dua that oh Allah help this religion oh Allah grant us support oh Allah from the two Amr and Umar it's very similar the meanings are very similar as well Amr and Umar whoever is more beloved to you grant them the, grant them the ability to accept this religion and to accept Islam the two were Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and Amr ibn Hisham, Abu Jahl ibn Hisham. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
he chose Hazrat Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu to be the criterion, the one who distinguished between haqq and batil, between truth and falsehood. And inshallah, what happened, we will we'll mention that in the coming thing, inshallah. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. It'll be inshallah two weeks time.